In this tutorial, we will install a self-hosted n8n on render.com and store the data on a web service called Superbase. This way, when our n8n instance restarts, we will not lose our data and can continue working with our workflows. Using render and Superbase, our self-hosted n8n can handle webhooks and will be free. So let's dive in to see how we can set up a free self-hosted N8N for our tests. To do this, navigate to your GitHub account and search for N8N to find and open the main repository. Click Fork to create a copy of N8N in your namespace. Choose a name for your fork like N8N-Render-Free and leave the rest as is and create a fork. This will allow us to manage and control how and when we want to update and redeploy our N8N instance on render. Otherwise, every time the main N8N repository is updated, render would start a redeploy. Now that we have our own fork of N8N in our own GitHub account, it's time to go to the next step and navigate to render.com. I have already a render.com account and the account is connected to my GitHub, as you can see in the render account settings. After connecting GitHub to render, you can create a new web service. Search for your recently forked repository, select it and connect to it. The name of the repository will be used as the name of the web service. For the region, choose a region near to you. Try to use the same region later for your Superbase project too. This will reduce latency between your web service and the database storing your configuration. In my case, I use Frankfurt because it's near my location and follows data privacy laws in the AU. Leave the rest of the configuration as it is and select free for the instance type. In the coming video, we will use a starter instance. But for this video, we will use the free instance as it would be more than enough for our testings. We will add environment variables in the next step. For now, just click on deploy web service. This will take some time. You can check the process in the logs. It will take a few minutes to build the service and you see the status building. After the build is finished, it will start to deploy the service and the status will change to in progress. One thing to note is that N8N needs an encryption key. Since we did not provide it in the environment variables, it will automatically generate one and store it on the disk. Later, we will provide the encryption key as an environment variable to prevent N8N to store any data on the local disk. After the deployment is finished, the status will change to live. You can copy the address of the new render instance and navigate to the address. A fresh copy of N8N will be waiting for us to set up an owner account. Here we can enter our information for the owner account. If you want, you can also answer some questions and click get started. You will finally reach the N8N dashboard. We name this workflow will be deleted. We do this because we know Render will not keep the configuration information if it redeploys the web service. But before we redeploy the web service and lose our data, we can add a webhook to see the default webhook URL. We add a webhook component. Since we did not define the webhook URL, you can see that the URL contains HTTP and localhost. This is not accessible from other services on the internet. So we need to provide a proper webhook URL in the environment variables. But as soon as we add environment variables, we need to redeploy our web service. This will cause a free render instance to lose all of the data and configurations. To prevent the data loss, you can switch to a paid render service and add a persistent disk. We will cover this in the coming video. Or you can use an external free service like Superbase. So navigate to Superbase and create a free account. 
After you sign in, you will see the dashboard and you can create a new Superbase project. For the project name, we use n8n-render-free and generate a password for our database. After generating the password, copy it to your clipboard. We paste the password in a moment into a node to use it later in our n8n environment variables. For the region, try to find one near to your render.com instance. In my case, it's Frankfurt again. This way, both the render instance and Superbase are in Frankfurt. This will minimize latency between the web service and the database. After our project is created, go to Project Settings. Then go to Database, where you will find the rest of your database information. If I split the window, you can see my Obsidian node and the Superbase database information side by side. Keep in mind that we still have the database password in our clipboard from the last step. So I paste the password in the node first. The rest of the information you can copy paste from Superbase to your Obsidian node or any simple text file you like. This includes the host, database, port and user. All of your database information is now in your node. Next, navigate to the render web service. Copy the address of the render instance and fill their corresponding environment variables. Paste it for the webhook URL and the editor base URL. For the host, remove the HTTPS as we use 443 for the port and HTTPS for the protocol. Now we have all of the information except the N8N encryption key. To get this, go to a random key generation website. Generate an encryption key, copy it and put it as the N8N encryption key. With this, all of the environment information needed for our instance is ready. We can copy it to our clipboard. Go to render.com and here you have two options. Either you can enter them one by one or go to the add from.env and paste all of the information at once. As you can see, all 15 variables are created. The first eight environment variables are for N8N. The next seven are for our database configuration. With this setup, our N8N data will be stored in Superbase. And when render redeploys the web service, our workflow data will not be lost and the data is persistent. After setting all of the environment variables, we save, rebuild and redeploy our render instance. You can go to events to see the deployment is in process. This will take a few minutes. After the deployment is done, our service is live again. You can also check it in the logs. Then you can copy the render instance address and navigate to it. As you can see, our previous information is gone and we must create the owner account again from scratch. Provide the same information and create the owner account and go to the dashboard. This time we call our workflow pink webhook. Search for webhook and add it to our workflow. Notice that the webhook URL is not the default local host anymore. It now starts with our render instance URL. Now it can be accessed from other web services on the internet. For the response, we use the response to webhook node. Go back, search for response to webhook and add it. We define the response as JSON and define status to be webhook is working and then go back. When we test our workflow, it waits for a trigger event. We could open the webhook, copy the link and paste it in an app like Insomnia or Postman. Send the GET request to the trigger URL of our webhook. When we send the GET request to our webhook, we receive the response as expected in JSON format. Status, webhook is working. When we navigate to N8N, we can see that we received a request from Postman with a lot of information. If we go back to our workflow, we see the green check marks. 
we see that our workflow on our self-hosted N8N on render worked as expected. It was triggered by an webhook and an external event over the internet. When you navigate to your superbase and click on table editor, you will see it is filled with the table structure that N8N needs. You will also see some configuration that N8N stored in the Superbase database. To verify that this information is persistent, you can manually restart the web service on render. Normally, with a free instance, all of the configuration would be lost, and you would have to register again. But here, when our system comes back, we see that our information is still there and our ping webhook is still present. This way, you can use this solution to test N8N with webhooks on a self-hosted instance. If you are interested in AI, automation or finance, you can join our community on school and connect with other like-minded people. Good luck setting up your self-hosted N8N instance for free.